let's go into this wonderful interview. So, ladies and gentlemen, he produced show. He have done Muppet show and touring uh, all over. So I want everyone to clap in your in your li living room in your office for the wonderful Kevin Carlson. You hear the applause? <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> so cool, Kevin, to have you on the show. Well, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, I want. I I always I could introduce you and all your work. I I found a lot of stuff, and you you are kind of a a piece of of knowledge about puppetry. But I will let maybe you to introduce you and how you fall into puppetry to the community who are watching right now. Okay, well, I've been puppeteering for close to. 45 years, I mean, professionally about 40 years in film and television mostly. Um, but I did start as a kid when I was 13, you know, um, watching the Muppet show inspired me to no end, uh, realizing that, oh, there's, there's actors, there's guys <laughs> underneath there and they're having fun and they're telling silly jokes and these characters are just so fun. And uh, I realized that, oh, I like that. And I, I kind of knew As a kid, I was going to be a performer, an entertainer of some kind. Mm -hmm. And uh, falling into puppetry made it really easy because, uh, you know, the, the diversity. You can play. Yeah, I played a Chicken McNugget on a commercial, right? <laughs> and so, you know, Robert De Niro can't say that he was a Chicken McNugget. <laughs> so, I mean, and then old characters, young characters. We're character actors, right? Yeah. And so that's part of the charm, too. I just love it. Yes. And the in the complete world of puppetry. If you're doing a live show or producing a live show, it's it's all the theatrics. It's the staging, the lighting, the sound equipment, the the everything about it. So it's it's a full encompassing theatrical event if you're producing live shows, you know. So yes. I, I love it. It's because it's it's artistic and funny and strange and and it's like we're all children, inner child kind of comes out when you do puppets so that's so true that's such a, a connecting art it's connecting with the child in everyone so it's it's really great and and that's true that you produce you fall into the production side also but it was kind of part sing, since you, the beginning of your career to produce also puppetry right you know it's funny um Yeah, I, I was working on Pee-wee's Playhouse, right? I, I did yeah. three of the characters on that. I did uh, Flory, Conky, and and um, Clocky. Guess what time it is? It's time for a penny cartoon. <laughs> Anyways, had a great that was a great experience. What well, a highlight of my uh, career, actually. It really kind of got me started. But during that time, I was uh, helping a friend set up a Halloween uh, installment and, mm. you know, hot gluing little trees on a little diorama thing and And we were talking and he was saying, well, yeah, so you're, you're, you're a professional puppeteer. Do you have your own show? And it was just like, uh, uh, no. And he goes, why don't you have your own show? You're a puppeteer. You should have your own show. And, and that was that kind of, that, that little poke in the ribs from my friend, Jim Landis, who's now, he's a prop master. He's a great guy. And, uh, that little poke in the ribs caused me to really think about creating my own show. Because I had, I had worked with, you know, uh, Sid and Marty Croft. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd been on television when DC Follies with them and yeah. uh, and other various little things. So I went to a friend of mine uh, who had his own kids party. It was James Murray. And he had his own kids party company where he would perform as Superman and go to parties and pass <laughs> out party favors and, and singing telegrams and things of that nature. And I said, I go, James, let's put together a a puppet show that we can rent out to birthday parties and whatnot. And so we did and created, uh, it was Timmy the Tooth was basically our, our main character and it was a variety show. And his uh, sidekick was Brush Brush. And that kind of developed into, um, you know, we, we, we did a theater run where we, we had a hundred seat theater and we were selling tickets. And we, as we were breaking down the stage, we decided, you know what, let's take it to the next level. And fortunately, it was at a great time. Uh, this was like the early 90s. And, and uh, 
the big studios were looking for home video because home video was the thing back then. Everybody wanted VHS tapes to put into the slots and <laughs> let their kids watch whatever was on the tape. And so uh, we were very fortunate to be able to sell that show to them, to yeah. Universal, you know, and they made some big money. <laughs> they made a little. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's cool to, to start from the birdie party and to bring this show to the Universal. That's such a great combination. Yeah, it's it's very challenging to sell a show. I mean, the hoops you got to jump through and then the people you you got to know and and it's show business, you know, so yeah. it's like <laughs> it's a it's a wild ride. I mean, because we had pitched the show to Disney and to 20th Century Fox and and Warner Brothers, all the ma major players, and they all just kind of weren't quite sure. But when we went to Universal, uh, they got it. They they saw the potential of it and the merchandising and the et cetera and everything else. And so and that and that's like 30 years old now, almost 30 years ago. Wow, that's so interesting. Yes, so that this is kind of a wonderful introduction. So this brings me to the deep question of the Puppet Podcast. So are you ready, Kevin? I'm, yeah, deep. Let's, deep. let's get deep. <laughs> and and people who are watching right now, feel free to bring this question into like the comments so we can bring it into the screen and just ask Kevin those deep questions that you maybe have at home. So, yeah. <laughs> so the first one is the why. Like, what makes the art of puppetry an art that you cherish? Ah. You know, I saw a, a black and white photo of um, during uh, World War II, I think, of mm -hmm. uh, maybe it was in France, where it's a black and white photo of kids watching a puppet show. And the look on their faces, there's one girl who's just in awe, and there's one kid that's laughing hysterically, you know? And, and it, it dawned on me that... You know, before there was TV or, or anything for children or, you know, entertainment, when a puppet show came into town and did a show, it was the thing to see. And, and I think when I saw that picture of those kids just in awe and then also kind of freaked out by it, too, because it's, you know, inanimate objects that come to life in front of you, you know, so it, it takes there's a little bit of like, whoa, how does how do I take this in? Um, and that kind of like made me realize that, oh, yeah, this is a good thing. This is this is a, a another way to entertain and and reach people that you know are are just mesmerized by it. So yeah, yeah so I think uh, yeah, I love it. I, I I love the the all of it. I you know, it's it's amazing how yeah. how people respond to it. And there's some people that just don't like puppets either. Yeah, I both mean, exist. Yeah, there's people that maybe had a bad experience at a puppet show or something, you know. So that's the point. Like, if you you have a good puppet show, you you are in a ascension ascension of like love and passion for it. If you right. you get into in front of like not quite a technical aspect of it or not quite tight, you you will maybe don't like it. But let's let's go to your crush moment. So I always ask, when was your crush? For puppetry, you see, like this is the spark. This is what I want to do. Uh, early on, I I was demonstrating puppets at, during Christmas time at a mall um, for these little hand puppets that were you know twenty thirty dollars, and um, I was hired to uh, demonstrate them. So as people would walk by, I would talk to them with the puppet, you know. <laughs> and then I had a couple of little uh, numbers that I that uh, you know on a on a tape cassette tape that i would play and and then perform to but i think it was when i was just it's like street performing basically i think that's when i really realized that oh there's there's no end to what you can do you know as far as performing and delighting people you know making them laugh or catch them off guard you know yeah. so that, that's kind of what what started and you know i was young i was young that was my first paid professional puppet job Wow, and into action, you get this like crush, and it, it's so. Or someone to become a puppeteer. Yeah, 
Well, I think it's it's like I said before, it's character acting, right? Mm -hmm. So it's really acting. And I think, uh, you know, a lot of people think, oh, voices are, you know, well, yeah, the voice is part of it, but the true acting uh, basics are, are fundamental for that. Yeah. And I also teach puppetry for film and television. I have Ooh. private students and I'm just learning how to do it on Zoom. So that it, it's a whole nother way of, of uh, teaching. But I, I love teaching someone who who's, wants to do it, first of all, and, and watching them develop and watching them stumble you know they hit the wall it's like oh, i can't do this i can't do this it's just too weird it's just weird i can't do this and then trying to work them through it and let them get out of themselves and just let them be so yeah acting uh, voice lessons um uh, singing because the puppets do a lot of singing that's true so singing lessons are are important um and i but i think it really comes down to what's in here you know what do you got? What do you got in here? Do you want to express yourself through your fingertips like this? You know? uh, so yeah, I, I I recommend acting and voice lessons and just general cuckoo because you got to be a little cuckoo to do it too.